Welcome to the After Hours Podcast, hosted by Harry Haas and James Friedlender, presented by My Investing Club. What's going on, guys? We're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, today, we have John, who is a member of MIC. Um, he's been a member for a little bit now, and we've, we've all been chatting back and forth for a while, so we're glad to finally get him on. So thank you for coming on, my man. Oh, man. Thank you guys so much for the opportunity to come on. Really appreciate of course, it. of course, dude. Of course, we're glad to have you. So, in classic form, we'll start off. If you could tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, how you got into trading, and then how you kind of eventually found MIC. Cool. So, I, um, so my background is I got an entrepreneurial background. I first started in the online space of uh, getting into affiliate marketing. I really wanted to build my own business, uh, do something for myself. So back in 2017, uh, or 2016, I should say, really kind of, I just started looking at different opportunities, different things to do. Um, and I, I did kind of well uh, in that, but it just didn't, didn't give me the traction. It just didn't give me what I wanted to do. And, um, and then crypto became really big in uh, 2017. Um, and I remember I was buying Bitcoin at like, fifteen hundred dollars which is like Jesus. i know <laughs> right now i'm just sitting i don't own any of it so i'm yeah. sitting here like wow um but you know i started in 2017 i started getting into more of the crypto um and then uh because i had the marketing background which i was already doing for a couple of years um my buddy hooked me up with somebody that was which I didn't know at the time, but the company that he was running, he was creating his own coin. I thought it was, you know, I thought this was it. I thought, man, this is going to yep. make me, you know. <laughs> I'm going to retire. I, yeah, exactly. I'm going to retire working with this guy. Um, what I didn't know is that I was operating a back end of a, of a pyramid scheme or a Ponzi scheme. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I had no idea until, you know, in, in the structure of the company was the coin is, you buy the coin and then you reinvest it back into the business. They have somebody on the back end trading it and then they pay you a dividend. To me, that sounded great. I thought, wow, yeah. this is actually a really good business model. Yeah. Um, what I didn't know is that he was going to pump up the coin and then sell off and then we would never hear from him again. Jesus. Yeah, I know. So it was really bad. I mean, I, even, I got caught into it too because I really believed in, you know, this company, his dream. Yeah. So what that what how that launched me into my trading career is that I said, you know what, how do you do this without getting involved in, in stuff like this? Now, I didn't know at the time that, you know, there was actually pump and dumps in the stock market. because I really didn't have any market knowledge besides the crypto market. Um, but it's what sparked my interest. So once I got done with that. I, it was, I want to say when all that happened is this is when Bitcoin tanked. This is beginning of 2018, end of 2017. Mm -hmm. um, so I did like what anybody else does. How do you make money? <laughs> How do you yeah. make money online? You know, or, you yep. know, with, with, with trading. Um, and the first person that came up was Tim Sykes. Yeah, um, of course. <laughs> you know, that his, his marketing hit me hard. You know, I was getting pop-ups here, left, left, and right. So I filled out the application for his challenge, wanted to see what it was about. Um, and I made the jump. You know, I had I had some money yep. left from you know all my other ventures. So I thought, you know what, this is this is gonna this is my next my next step. So I got involved with um, Tim Sykes program. And, you know, I just, it was information overload, I should say. <laughs> yeah. So I started off, I just, I just hit the books. I started learning everything that I could. Um, and that's when I actually realized what I was in when I was with that, that crypto company. Um, I really, he kind of taught me what a pump and dump was. Cause that, you know, that's what he, you know, he teaches. Yeah. So I got involved in that. Um, but really the information was just like information overload. I, I didn't know where to go. Like, you know, I was like this guy by myself. I thought I was going to have all the support, you know, but for me, I was so determined that I just thought, you know, I'm just going to keep hammering all this information. I'm just going to do, but then when I, when it came to actual trading, 
I had, I, I didn't know what to do. It was like, you know, I had like paralysis when it came to, yeah. you know, yeah. actually were you, clicking. Were buttons. you executing or are you just like nervous to even literally trade? Like, so I, like cause I button. didn't really know the process. Yeah. You know, they didn't have a process I should say. I mean, yeah, yeah. they, he had like these steps of finding pump and dumps, but I mean, I, we all know this. They rare, it's a, it's a rarity when you actually get those huge, huge moves that, you know, yeah. that, that they're looking for. So for me, I didn't, I wasn't familiar with it, but I also had to put the time in. So I thought, you know, let me just keep, keep at this. And, you know, I, I wanted to bring this up because uh, this is a great opportunity is that in, I believe it was August or September, mm-hmm. MIC started. Yeah. And, sure. and it was 2018. I want to say you guys were running lifetime for 2,500, 3,000. For the yep. beginning, for that initial start, yeah. and it was like a, and I kept hearing about uh, IU Investors Underground, yep. and I just heard a lot of people talk about IU. Well, because of MIC being so new, I just was like, you know, I'll go with I'll go with IU, which honestly, yep. I and I don't regret, but I do at the same time because I really wish I was a founding member. I I really wish I was here for the beginning. Because I really think that my career um, in trading would have been way more accelerated than it than it has been. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I trust the journey, and I'm here now. So, but yeah. yeah, I thought there was a funny story that you know I remember seeing that, and I was like, you know what? Am I gonna pay two thousand dollars for one year, or should I pay three thousand? For a lifetime with these guys and man i wish i, I know i don't even know i forget what, i don't know what lifetime is now but it's like it's like what tasha always says right it's like a good stock i think it's like eight to ten k now or some oh, shit. I, don't man, I know i don't I even know, know which i'm building up for <laughs> i know i don't even remember but it, it's true it's like i mean they're the cool thing about mic is that there is such value like day to day and I'm, I'm like you i did try other communities like it was a very brief period but like I don't know. I tried them. I'm not going to bash anyone. I mean, that's it, whatever. But yeah. there was just, it was like night and day between the way that MIC operates as a community, even just like day to day talking to moderators, like most places, like you can't even talk to like the mods or like people who run it. Like yeah. they just oh, ignore you, tell you, tell you to watch some like couple year old video. And it's like, it's like, look, it's just like, unfortunately, like the market doesn't work like that. Like, like everything going on today the stuff that Harry was longing yesterday or, you know, last month, two months ago, the stuff I was shorting, things have already changed. It just, yeah. that, that is what happens. Yeah. So it's, so it's cool. So uh, the la- one quick, before you, we keep going, you said you had an entrepreneurial background. Did you, do you have any family that's into like entrepreneurship or is that no. just, were you the first? I'm the first. Yeah. Cool. So oh, it's bro. Like, oh, yeah. Bro. Breaking that it. cycle, you know, um, I love it. yeah, it, it was something new, you know, I, it, it just intrigued me to work for yourself, uh, yep. make you, yeah, do for your own. And, uh, it's just been great. You know, so I far. consider, I mean, I consider traders like entrepreneurs too. And, and, you know, oh, I mean, me obviously too. for anyone who knows me, like I have a business outside of uh, trading and it's like, I think being an entrepreneur, like I don't say it's about myself cause I don't feel that way, but it's just from what I recognize and like seeing other people being doing what we do here or like operating a business or whatever it takes a lot of like, I don't want to say balls, but it kind of does. It just takes like a lot of like guts to really put yourself out there and like trust in what you're doing. And I feel like I never recognize the correlation between business ownership and trading and how much you have to trust the process of your, your own business and what you're operating and, and how it's going to spit out profits and stuff like that. So I think it's pretty cool. I think it's cool you do that. And I think also like, you know, if you're, running a business or doing whatever, like you have to believe in yourself a lot, you know, like there's a lot of people who are just like not confident, like in their own abilities. And, and, you know, when they're approached with the challenge, they're like, oh man, I can't do this or, oh man, I can't do that. But like, you know, I think like, especially with like anyone who's into trading or entrepreneurship, you know, you have to really, really believe in yourself in order to kind of, I think, take that leap of faith and just, you know, it's really a leap of like, kind of like blind faith, you know, like you don't know if trading's going to work out. You don't know if like your business is going to work out or whatever, but you're like, man, I believe in myself. I know I can do this. I know I can get better. And I think that is really, you know, I guess like for me, like where that, where that comes from. Um, so like once you joined MIC, uh, what was, uh, you know, maybe some things you learned or like wish you had done or like, are there any things like that? Or like, how are you doing now? 
Um, maybe so, we could like go back yeah. into your training journey a little bit. Yeah, no, of course. Yeah. So um, I joined MIC in the beginning of 2020, uh, made the leap. And from the start, I mean, I already knew that MIC was different from all of the other communities just because of, you know, that support aspect. You know, you came in and, and the first thing that they say is, you know, what we talk about, I should say, is the process. You know, what is your process? Are you going inside the market and you, and you know what you're going to be doing every single day? Um, you know, and I kind of wrote it down, <laughs> you know, because of the fact that, you know. Um, I like it. Yeah, yeah, I, I have to just as yeah, I am. I'm, I'm, so, I'm I mean, it's, it's becoming, uh, you're almost becoming a robot. You're almost becoming a robot to the process. Yeah. And, and, and that's what MIC taught me. They taught me, you know, sizing in correctly. They taught me the, the right stocks to look at. You know, and I kind of had the, the price action and knew, you know, how to read price action. But I wouldn't want to say that MIC molded me to learn how to actually trade it. Um, yeah. By, um, by what you got, but by what MIC teaches. Um, you know, the 30% rule, sizing in correctly, knowing when to go short, you know, waiting for under VWAP, uh, looking yep. for the, the, the runners on the day, you know, stocks with volume, um, having your, your risk. I mean, the major thing is risk management. I mean, yep. that is the yep. biggest thing. I, um, before MIC, I think I was, I blew up three accounts and I don't think I traded longer than two weeks in each of those accounts. Really? I yeah oh yeah because of the I was just emotional I I was yeah. sizing in too big I didn't have this the support of the community to to kind of just bring me back down to say you know it, it you know this is a, a um this is a journey this is what's the word I'm it's looking a marathon for? not a sprint yeah there you go it's yeah. a marathon yeah. not a sprint and yeah. I I just did you just didn't have that kind of support in other places so when i joined mic it, it it totally changed my trading completely um now i i started back up trading in be beginning of november and my account's still alive <laughs> there you go there you go so i do i think it's funny like I've, I've been around for a long time it's so um so is harry now and it's like honest to god until mic started like i never saw people on like twitter or anything like that talking about like max daily losses hard stops like i yeah. see people make risk making fun of that stuff all. risk man yeah risk management in general like they they would just say oh like you know stop out quickly basically it was like the the thing and it's like but how like what do you mean like how you yeah. know how do you know when enough is enough and and it was really until mic that i had the same problem initially i just i wouldn't know how to take a loss like i just i wouldn't know where to size i wouldn't know where to do that so it's like i think it's a testament to where you're at now it's cool to see because clearly it's night and day right before you didn't have that risk management aspect mm -hmm. of like, I need to protect my account. I need to protect myself. And now you kind of do. So where, like, where are you now? Like, how is your trading going? You know, what are your best kind of setups and you know, what's kind of, what's, what is it going to be for you going forward? So my, my setups now, I, I'm a, I'm short, short bias trader. Oh. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, I've gained consistency in, in my trading to the point where, I, I'm, I, I don't think, I don't want to say that I can go full time yet because I'm just not there. I mean, do I think that I will one day? Of course. Um, but right now it's just getting those small gains. Uh, not really worried about the gains. I'm just worried about the trading. Uh, yeah, even like though that. I've been here, you know, been doing this, you know, now all about going into four years, you know, I'm not even thinking about that. I'm just focused on trading well um you know just trading my setups and and refining those and right now i'm only focused on you know one or two setups i i like the first red day setup when they do come right. but since that's not an all, all the time i'm i'm mostly shorting into resistance so i'm shorting the open i'm waiting for you know the big top out moves uh, yep. waiting for the slams and then you know once it gets under vwap you know then i'm starting in a position you know, risking over VWAP. And then once the trade starts working, you know, then I'll start adding into the position and start going full size, you know, waiting for those confirmation type setups rather than um, anticipation. Yeah, so I think that, that is, I think that's super key. Like uh, there's a podcast coming out today where we talked about 
you know, with Trev, where, you know, if you're trading, like, let's say, you know, 100 shares, like there's, you could do like, you could fill like, you know, 20 or 30 shares on the front side, and then add all that in on the, I'm not saying that, you know, that's what you trade with. Or anything yeah. Like that. But, you know, if you're, let's say, like, keep it simple, you know, oh, I guess it came out. Um, um, <laughs> it, it literally just came out right now. So, um, <laughs> oh, the um, yeah, I was gonna um, say. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, you know, so let's say you like, you size in super, super small, and then you just add the rest on the confirmation. You know, that's really all you need. And, um, you know, I think that that is, is really kind of super, super important to, to recognize and to do, you know? Oh, definitely. And then also to even, even uh, executions and then for covering, you know, that that's also a big thing too, because, you know, we're, MIC taught me and especially bow. I mean, listening to him about the, you know, the 20, you know, you make, three trades, you make 20 cents a piece, that's 60 cents. You're doing that with a thousand shares. You know, your risk is, quick. oh, it adds up, it adds up so quick. Um, so not only does it help me with my entries, but now my exits, I'm covering in support. Yeah. I'm keeping some for lower. Um, and it really just depends. I mean, it, it, if the range on the stock isn't there, um, I'm not going to hold for lower. You know, if we're already yep. getting down to the bottom of the range, you know, I'm not, I'm what it, now, now you're just trying to get the little meat, you know, that's on yeah. the bone left. Yeah. And, you know, that's where you get into trouble because, you know, volume, uh, volume starts drying up, um, shorts start to cover, you know, once that volume comes in next to, you know, that winning trade that you could have made that 20, 30 cents on, well, now you're underwater and now you're thinking, okay, well, it worked once. You know, so it should go back down. And then next thing you know, you're, you're putting yourself into an emotional roller coaster. Yeah. Um, and, and then all of a sudden, your process goes out the window. Um, so I definitely think that your entries and your exits, are, they're, most, they're just as important to one another. Yeah, you um, know what I like to hear is that, so I know we've talked in the past a little bit, and <clears throat> I like to hear, like, you definitely have, like, a new level of confidence. Like, you don't you actually like sound like you have like a process that makes sense. You sound like, you know what you're actually looking for. You sound like you have a sizing plan you have all of this. And like, did that come naturally to you? Like as you were in MIC or did it take this kind of last like year or so, or like really since you've been in to, to really get yourself there? Like, did, was that something that, you know, to you, did you have to, did you make all the mistakes first and do those stupid things like chase lows, add to stupid things and stuff like that? Or Kind of so like kind of I, I part would, of your journey go. Yeah, no, definitely. I I think it's a, I think it's both because you know as I'm learning it, um, I think with trading though everyone's gonna it, it. I think it's a very rare thing for someone not to experience it themselves because it's kind of like oh that plate's you know it's about the kid oh the the stove's hot but then in your mind you're, oh yeah. is it how hot is it you know like. <laughs> Let me touch it. <laughs> yeah, and then you touch it, and it's like, oh wow, it is hot. Um, there is things in MIC that I don't do sp specifically because we are told not to do them in our process. But there is definitely yep. things that I learned and and did. Um, and I don't want to say that I was trying to break rules, but you know, you, you sometimes your emotions get the best of you, yep. and you make decisions based off of your emotions. And you don't realize you're actually making them. Um, so that's why when I, you know, that's why I say it's like a one in one thing because I, I have done things differently because of MIC, but then I've also done things differently because of MIC and then making those mistakes on my own, not yeah. realizing that I'm actually making them. You know, there's times where, you know, I wasn't covering into support and we were, you know, we're bottom of the range, but like I was so wrapped up in the trade that I thought, okay, you know, and next, you know, it, it, we're we're so close we're almost to red green or we're almost to yeah. green red and and i'm and i'm not covering and i yeah. and now i'm yeah. now yeah so in so yeah. there's just little little things that you know i knew not to do but because i was you know kind of in the moment maybe i was just sized in a little bit too much uh maybe i thought that the trade maybe i was anticipating um and then from there i would go back and say, okay, what's our process? And then what did I do wrong? And then I would fix it for next time.
Yeah. I like that. No, I, I like that I, a lot. I like that too. Um, do you think like, uh, you know, as far as like, there were like any like key videos or anything that you watched or do you think it was more so just like, um, you know, just watching so, videos consistently or like, is there anything like for someone who just joined MIC, like, is there any like favorites that you would tell people to go back and watch? Like oh, if you man, had to I like wish. design a curriculum. So the way I did it when I first joined is I, I followed MIC to, to the, to the T with, you know, going in well, now we have Nancy's intro video. Yeah. Um, so we have Nancy's intro video. See, I actually see Harry you're really proud. I wrote it down all the all my key points. <laughs> <Out of> before. <laughs> <Out of> before. <laughs> so I, I I definitely recommend Nancy's intro video, um, Faye study guide. Um, you know, if, if you're an MIC, everyone should know who Faye is. <laughs> yeah. And hey, uh, hey, the deep, ghost. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> hey, she's, she's, the, she's the worthy ghost, though. She's the she's worthy, the worthy ghost. ghost. She's the she's worthy like ghost. The, so uh the accelerator program i watched that three times you know just to even okay. though cool. yeah i've watched it about three times i i continue to watch it because um you know there's always things you know if you watch a movie more than more than once yep. you start finding things that you didn't see before and it's the same thing in trading the more you watch the more you're going to be like wow i didn't see that last time or because there's different your mind is not gonna it, we're yep. human your mind is that information it's not gonna pick up everything exactly it's not gonna pick up everything you're you, if you're focused on okay i want to be a short bias trader you're, you're gonna start figuring out things about being short but then when you rewatch it you're gonna say okay well i was so focused on that well now i'm learning this and you know re-watching the videos I know yeah. some people are going to be like, oh, wait, that's that, that's a waste of time. But it's not because, dude, you know, you, you know, people watch the accelerator as fa- I think so many people try to watch it as fast as possible too. originally because they're just like, oh, I want to get through it. I want to get through it and get to the next thing. And it's yeah. like, you, now you hear John saying like he watched it three fucking times and the accelerator is what, seven hours or eight yeah. hours long. <laughs> like it's not short. And it's like. It, it, that's what pisses me off yeah. the most my D, my dms lately have been filled with like newer guys so for anyone who doesn't know mic got rid of monthly memberships we only have annual or lifetime now so you if you join you're serious so why not take that first class like the most serious mm-hmm. like it's like driving school it's like your yeah. first driving class is like how you learn how to fucking drive it's like how you learn the basic operations of your motor vehicle it's like people bust through that fucking video and think oh i'm gonna be a millionaire tomorrow it's like no like you're hearing it from someone who's now being consistent and doing well you have to take it slow and actually pay attention to these watch these things multiple times because you are like you said you're gonna pick up nuances i still go back i bet harry does too i still go back and watch uh the trading fish stuff like when i'm fucking working out when i'm taking a shit when i'm doing anything like i listen to that thing over and over and you know what i hear new things when bow's talking all the yep. fucking time so I, I i really like that you said that i think that's a huge point yeah and i think also like you know when you're learning how to drive a car first of all you know everyone gets in that car right you know when you're but with trading like a lot of people are afraid to even step in the car you know mm-hmm. and then you have to press the gas and the brake and you know similar to trading you know like covering and and buying and shorting and whatever, you know, some people are afraid to do that so far. And then you get to an intersection and so on, and it gets more complicated when you're driving, you know, but I think about, uh, you know, I think there are some similarities there as well. And I also think that like, you know, when you're driving, everyone's cheering you on, right? Everyone's like, Oh man, you're doing such a great job. You're (laughs) you're, you're driving. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, I'm so proud of you. (laughs) And the other two people in the back training. seat. Yeah, and you start <laughs> fucking training. And everyone's like, "Oh, you're a DJ. You're a fucking gambler, bro. Get a get a nine to five. You know, like it, it's crazy. You know, if you mm-hmm. get in a car accident, everyone's like, "Oh, it's okay. It happens. I'm you have glad insurance. you're safe. Yeah, you fucking <laughs> blow up your account, and everyone's like, "You fucking idiot. You're such a dumbass. <laughs> go go the fuck back to work." You know, I mean, that's literally fucking human nature, right? How did you get that, my girlfriend's voice? Did, did you have any, any uh, <laughs> did you have any, like, kind of, uh, uh, like, family, like, kind of, uh, uh, that were a little hesitant or uh, that, like, so, weren't really supportive or? Well, you know, as I got into this, my my dad, um, my dad, 
well, my grandfather, his brother was really into stocks. I mean, to the point where they, he would, I remember being a kid and he'd be like, get off my papers, John, get off my papers. And I'm thinking like, this guy's crazy papers everywhere. <laughs> like, but then my, my mom's told me that those papers were the business section of, of all the stocks. They were, he had, he would stay up, stay up all night. He would do all of his research. And I mean, we're talking, we're talking 1970s, 1960s, 1980s. So they didn't yeah. have the technology that we have today. Um, so now was he actually trading or was he just like, uh, he was, I have, I have, yeah. I have family that was like that too. They'd be like, they'd be like yeah. looking at like, oh, Microsoft's at this today. It's like, <laughs> I don't even know if they're fucking trading it. I just, yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> no, no. He, yeah, he was a big investor. Uh, he, they cool. both had, uh, successful careers. My grandfather was a civil engineer. Um, oh, so yeah, so they, they had a uh, successful career. So, um, you know, they were very, really smart, really analytical, um so yeah they were so it's it's awesome to kind of see um you know that i picked this up and to see that you know my family ha has been involved in the markets before um but nothing when i first started this yeah they they didn't they, they nobody really understands it until you do it kind of yeah. thing you know they yeah, exactly what terry said you know um oh you're you're trying to trade go get a nine to five stop taking yeah. the e wait this is the best part stop don't take the easy way don't don't take don't try way. to make the easy money <laughs> this is the hardest thing i've called it this is the biggest self-discovery journey you will ever take and yeah. learn about yourself there's discovery or destructive oh, oh yeah. it's, it's seriously like <laughs> it's you, you'll feel other. so you you'll you'll think like man i've made strides and let me tell you the market will humble you back down and in a good way because it, it's just it's a it's a big growth experience um and i think when people actually take it serious and they don't go where's lambo and they actually look at it as uh, as as trading as a as a real journey, and um, I think there, I think it goes to a different level. Yeah, I think we are all you know we we all are on that level when somebody comes in and they assume that because you can just open up a brokerage account and you can click a click of a mouse, that makes it easy. And yeah. I think that's where it comes from. Because that's all you need to do. You know, you don't have to go go to school. You don't, well, you do. But in, in the more general pop is yeah, they yeah. think that you don't have, you know, you just go in there, you click a button and, and that's it. Um, they don't understand the nuances of actual trading and they don't put the time in to actually learn it. And yeah. then when they lose, well, it's never their fault. It's the market's fault. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, I it, it's true, man. It's true. It's I, I think people don't understand that like part of this journey is I think more of it is I the technical side of it. I honestly think you can teach anybody. I, I really mm -hmm. do. I think anybody can learn like because you could make it so black and white for people like you, you could say, hey, if a stock after 930 is under VWAP, it's a, you could short it with risk or review. Like you could make it so technical. Doesn't mean it's going to work as often as the way we trade, but you could. Like I, I like to keep you guys updated. Like I'm helping that uh, the guy who owns a convenience store next to my business. And Dude, he's killing it. He's killing it. He's doing really good. Um, he's making like between like two to 500 a day. This guy started trading Absolutely. a month and a half ago, right? That's why. And it is, right? But again, it's because he's so technical, but he had his first uh, red day. And his first red day, or he had like a $300 loss and then like a $50 loss, which in my opinion, great losses, still within his like range is like yep. not his max daily, all that shit. But the emotional down, I could see it in him. Like the days that he's making money, it's such a happy, like, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. This is such yeah. a cool thing. Everything, because you're learning. Then the down days, even if it's a down day that's like reasonable. Even if it's, it's a fucking a, dollar, bro. It is. It's just this <laughs> odd feeling of like, oh my God, I'm a piece of shit scumbag moron. Like, why the fuck did I do that? Like, yeah. I can't, you can't explain that to people <laughs> who haven't done it. Unless like, maybe, I, I hate to compare it. Maybe someone who goes to a casino can kind of relate because it's like that person that stays a little too long at like the blackjack table yeah. and like they're like 
one more hand, one more hand, then you get fucked. And you're I like, I still feel yeah. like in a in a fucking casino though. Like everyone's like, like you almost expect to lose. I think the majority. Oh yeah. Unless you're like a fucking professional gambler, you almost like expect it's to true. lose. But with trading, you do not expect to lose. Like you're going into the day confident. You're like, all right, bro, I back tested all this shit last night. <laughs> Good to go. Yeah, and we got ninety so percent success yeah. rate on our yeah, side. Yeah, it's like it's, you're you're a, like you're a. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. You're we'll we'll cut it out if i can't you're like a fucking you know psych student you're like you're like i, I, I studied these supernovas bro like yeah supernovas from fucking 1999 man like microsoft was the shit and like you're you're all like getting ready to like fire up and uh yeah there's not a supernova today and you're like oh shucks man i'm just gonna short this nasdaq low float that's up like 500 percent and see how i do because yeah, it's, it's bound well, to go supernova yeah. i think the thing with trading too i think the thing with trading which is tough is like I, you're right it's like you know we do all this work and all this preparation for years and years and years and like still realistically one trade can like fucking blow you up and like you don't have to nec- you won't necessarily win on every trade it's like me going to work doing a haircut like and 90 percent of the time i'm getting paid but like one time i'm not gonna get maybe i don't get paid maybe they don't like the haircut maybe something happens and it's maybe like it still feels like shit stop bro what yeah maybe they, they, maybe they bail and bail me <laughs> i know i fucking honestly i'm too fucking fat and lazy i'd let them go i just I'll <laughs> the next time but no it's, free, it's just it's free, free like, haircuts we, yeah, whatever, bro. It's yeah, I'm going to James for my haircut, and I'm starting my business next door to his. I mean, what? <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. It's true. It's just I don't know. It's cool, but I I really do like seeing you uh, progress the way you have, man. It's, it's cool to watch because I I've noticed like you know Harry and I've been here like as long as MIC's been around, so it's like you see people come and go, and originally, and now it's like you see people come, and now they're actually like growing into profitable traders, and it's yeah. like. We got fucking 2,400 people or whatever it is, 2,317. It's like the amount of profitable guys and people that even just talking to, you can tell, understand what we're teaching and what Alex and Bao and Tasha yeah. teach. It's fucking really cool to see. So, so I, I give you a lot of props, man. I, uh, I like to see it. I appreciate that. I really appreciate that, James, because I started, I started as a monthly. So, you know, yeah. just to go back kind of like, you know, when I started in MICs, I started as a monthly. And I mean, I, I took the full ride because um, Accelerator, I was there when Accelerator was just, it, it didn't just come out, but it was like brand new still. Yeah. So they weren't yeah. just offering it inside the program. Yeah. It yeah. was, and you know, I, I wanted to have money in my trading account. You know, I just didn't have, you know, expendable yeah. to $2,500 at the time to do the Accelerator plus uh, the yearly. So I thought, well, about 2000. So I thought, you know what, let me do, cause I really wanted to do the accelerator program. I did the three month, the, is it the, was it the four month or is it three, three. or four month? Three. Is it three, three months? Three yeah. Month. I think three I think, month I think. plus the accelerator. So I did the monthly plus the three month of the accelerator, but then rates were going to go up for the yearly, like two months <laughs> later. And I just thought, man, I'm putting it on a credit card. I got to, yeah, I got to get it. I got to get in, you know, yeah. and, and I, it, cause I, you know, I had the cash, but I, I want it, you know, I like credit. So, you know, yeah. but anyways, I, um, yeah, I just was like, you know what? So I went from monthly to the three month plus accelerator to a yearly because yeah. of, I saw the, the value of what MIC offered. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, in the future, I'll, I'll go, uh, Dude, we're not we're not snake oil salesmen right like i never people ask all the time they'll dm me like should i upgrade should i upgrade it and like i would never be like yeah because you know if you don't you're never gonna make money you're not gonna like yeah. i just believe like investing in yourself and investing in education like like dude yeah. especially like like barbers dude they go to uh shows at, like monthly they pay for that shit like i'm a wine like i like wine a lot i pay to go to like wa- uh, wine tasting wine classes like all that stuff and i don't even get anything back for that except just drinking some wine like i don't get yeah. shit you know but but you guys here it's like you guys have the opportunity to pay for something that in the short term might sting just because like obviously buying something that like you don't get that instant gratification for does hurt but think about the potential like i mean i you know listen me and harry talk about like money and stuff all the time but like and i, I don't want i don't want to put anyone on blast like how much they make or anything like that but like dude, you can make that back like so fucking fast oh, it's not even funny like so just sticking fast. to the basic process like you see newer members making between like 100 and 200 a day these are just new guys who just like are like just getting into it and it's like 
again, think about that just like long term. If that's the most you ever make a day, which is not realistic, you're probably gonna make more. But think about how fast you make that back and you have the rest of your fucking fifty years to to do whatever you want. Yeah. And when you oh sorry here. Oh no, I was just gonna say I think that that is uh, you know like a good place to kind of like start maybe like winding down a little bit because you yeah know, I didn't even see the time <laughs> yeah I mean we have been uh you know at our we're our, we are coming up on our kind of like 30 minute mark oh, but yeah, yeah I I agree with what James said where you know we're not we're not like it's not like Alex is like yeah try and get as many of these people to upgrade as you can <laughs> you know like like people ask us like literally every day like should we upgrade should we do this should we do that and like you know, none of us are, 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 are saying like, oh, you must do that. But like all of us are saying like, it's probably like the best idea to, you know, invest in yourself. And, and it's literally like university, you know, like you, university is not free. You have to pay uh, way more than MIC for just one year, oh, Jesus. you know, oh. it's, it, it's fucking insane. So, you know, yeah, that's all I have to say where it's like, you know, like none of us are, are like, you know trained salesmen or anything like that it's like you know we like, don't get anything either there's no, no, there's no like, you know, you know, you know, you know they're not like here you get, you no, get all their monies it no, doesn't work like that you know no. we just generally care and want to see people succeed so yeah but i guess we are coming up on the time and it is pre-market so we should probably start focusing on this so right. john thank you for coming on man you did awesome and uh i appreciate it and i know would love to have you back in the future and just to kind of document your progress yeah, oh, for thanks, sure. James, Harry. I really, guys, appreciate this opportunity. So, Of course, man. Of course. We'll, we will talk in chat. All right. Will do. All right. Later.